Hello guys, welcome to PA Talks episode 4. This episode of PA Talks is with Habibim Ajjabadi. She's one of the most outstanding architects of younger generation in Iran. Ajjabadi's works has been recognized and awarded internationally. Her artistic explorations goes beyond architecture and she's also working on art installations and design. I hope you will enjoy this interview guys. Thank you. For your interest in our uh, architecture and welcome to our office if i go back in time uh, when i've chosen this profession uh, actually i knew nothing about architecture and i was uh, curious maybe the curiosity was the reason for me to choose architecture as a field of my study i like architecture because uh, it it first it was a mystery for me it was like uh, choosing architecture like uh, plunging yourself into a um, completely unknown territory and uh, that makes it really attractive uh, i found that i like it very much because you know every, every human being like to have uh, his or her footprints on this earth and architecture for me is a way of uh, being effective and uh, to have my footprints and um, I don't limit myself with architecture sometimes I use literature and uh, other forms of art just uh, as a way to express myself the factors that you mentioned are important and uh, should be considered in a project but architecture is not uh, there to respond to all of these uh, aspects equally in all of the projects I think each project has its own uh, suggestion the project suggests me this is a time to uh, consider the context. This is a time to consider climate. I can clarify with an example. For example, if you if you work in Bangladesh or if you work in um, Yazd with the very difficulties uh, in climate, then you should consider climate. The climate is the most important aspects of the project. But if you work in Tehran, maybe uh, air pollution is important, uh, budget is important, and it's different from project to project. Uh, before starting a project, I have no pre-assumption. The morphogenetic idea of the project, which aspect of the project can be morphogenetic? Uh, sometimes uh, it is uh, context, sometimes it's budget, sometimes it's um, some uh, rules and regulations, limitations in, in cities, municipality regulations. Project to project is different. I believe that uh, some of the uh, historical aspects uh, they, they extend from past to present. As an example, an architect of 2000 years ago in Iran uh, had to deal with the same climate, with the same sunlight. We had a harsh sunlight in our climate. They had their own uh, solutions to mitigate the sunlight. Uh, for example, they had um, brick mesh, fakhramadin. Their solutions can be inspiring for us uh, because we, we, we still have the problem. We still have that, that historical uh, issue. If we just imitate, that's a superficial uh, you know, use of uh, history. We, we should not use history to make a continuity.
The start point was a meeting with a client. The first meeting with a, with a client, I, I understand that the client is uh, so much interested in uh, plants and the spaces, but the land was so tiny. It was 220 square meters. The land lets you only the, uh, for a pathway to the parking. So uh, I, uh, I was thinking, uh, where can I put my plants? And then, then I thought, I, uh, maybe I can put uh, all the green and the uh, plants on the facade. There is a green line which starts from the uh, yard and cuts the facade into two parts and then goes uh, up to the roof garden. The idea of approximation in this project, um, actually uh, it was not that's much clearer the way I want to uh, do the approximation um, and it became more clear and complete in the process of construction. That was the very tough part uh, for convincing the client because he was thinking that uh, why I want all these uh, 3,000 pieces of wood, each one is slightly different from the uh, other piece. It's not more expensive than using advanced technology. Uh, and this is a great potential in Iran uh, because everybody knows a handmade artifact is uh, much more precious than a machine made. I always compare it a handmade carpet and machine made carpet. A handmade carpet has all the, the defects and imperfections but it's still more precious. Uh, that's my logic for convincing the client uh, to have a unique facade, to have a unique uh, um, piece of art that cannot be repeated uh, and uh, to involve uh, all these uh, workers. I myself enjoyed uh, going to the factory and training all the workers how to cut the pieces and I gave them a kind of freedom to shape the head of the wood and the way they like. So, uh, kind of uh, limited freedom and uh, they were so happy because uh, they they were out of their routine life in the factory and uh, for the first time maybe they thought that they are doing something creative and uh, they are a part of doing uh, an artwork they're making an artwork for the first time in their life maybe and uh, when the when the project is finished uh, many people um, think that this project belongs to them and the par part of their spirit remained in that project. You know, I like uh, natural materials to be used in natural ways. We should not impose uh, exact geometrical shapes to natural materials. And I want to make reference to a quote uh, from uh, Arne Henriksen, a Norwegian architect. Natural materials are alive when they are in the nature. When we detach them from the nature, we kill them by detaching. And uh, we should uh, give their life back to them by the way we use the, uh, the material in our architecture. And that's, that's the way I try to uh, make them alive again. To explain the logic of uh, shaping the wood like this, uh, to make the, the, the reason I wanted each piece of wood to be slightly different from the other piece and to have uh, approximate shape and size uh, is that first of all uh, I think because uh, wood is a natural material uh, so we should treat, treat it uh, in a natural way. Uh, I believe uh, imposing exact geometrical shapes and sharp edges to natural mat materials will kill them and it's, it's not uh, in harmony with the, with the nature. I always have an example. Imagine uh, if you are asked to design a box of pears. One way is uh, giving each pair a different design. Another way is uh, design one pair and copy the rest of the pairs in the box. But nobody expects all the pairs to be uh, exactly 
equal and geometrically similar. Uh, so there is a solution in the nature and that is a natural algorithm. Be inspired from nature in this project. The way we shape the wood uh, approximately, they are all uh, similar, they have some similarities, they, are, they belong to a similar family of forms, but uh, they are not uh, identical. You know, exact geometrical shapes and uh, sharp edges and identical shapes, they belong to the industrial era only, when there was an urge to produce more and more more products and faster and faster but today it's not like that there's no urge for producing more and uh, even in mass production you see uh, the factories they make uh, customization and they they try to um, give uh, a different character to each piece and, uh, and they nowadays the handmade objects are more uh, appreciated uh, even humanizing the music they, they add the defects of um, a real player, the defects, the, the, the what errors of a, a real player to, the, to digital music, so uh, it make it more human. As a result of uh, disappearing gardens in Tehran uh, during past years, birds which were living in Tehran for, uh, for a long time, uh, they're losing their habitats. And uh, this kind of projects can be something like a prototype, uh, maybe a solution for, if, if, if they, they become common and in, in large number if we, if we consider vertical gardens uh, in, the, in the city, maybe um, they can improve, uh, first of all, the quality of air. We have uh, very serious air pollution in Tehran. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, maybe we can bring back uh, all the different yeah, bears to the city. To be honest, uh, the start point was the budget. We had a very tight budget and the first day the client came to our office and uh, he, he asked us for an architecturally precious residential building, but uh, he said we really have a tight budget. So we had to find a solution for that. As you see, the, the facade, the design of facade is uh, somehow very complicated. And uh, it is it's difficult to do it with uh, uh, unskilled workers that uh, we had in the workshop. And we had to translate the, the complicated design to a simple language which is understandable for the workers, which is not uh, Kind of very sophisticated face to drawings because they don't understand. Uh, that was the challenge of our project. How we can we should perform this? The solution was um, a written instruction. We 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 wrote all the instructions that uh, should be performed in the. Uh, workshop and that instruction was inspired from the instruction we have in carpet factories the main material as you mentioned is fire bricks fire bricks because it's a available local material and it's not expensive we we avoided compositive facade we didn't want um, the building to be a composition of uh, windows, parapets, handrails and uh, all these elements that we need uh, for entering light, for uh, safety, for having view. We were searching for uh, one solution who responds to all the needs of a modern facade, of a, uh, of a contemporary brick facade. We designed an 
integrated brick texture and uh, all this texture is designed really brick by brick uh, the, the, the place and the projections of bricks, the hollow uh, spaces uh, they designed really brick by brick not with any computer algorithms maybe in, in, in a larger scale projects it's not possible to do it this way. The only, the only tools we had was uh, AutoCAD. So you did all of these by hand? By hand and uh, I myself maybe 100 times I, I changed the place of bricks. All these um, openings on the facade, there are uh, factors of a space behind, behind it. For example, if um, there is a hall, if there is a bedroom, then the opening is uh, a little bit uh, wider and when there is a terrace where we put the mechanical, mechanical system and, uh, and then we make it narrower and sometimes in some parts we covered all the facade so it was really a, a parameter factor of the, the, the space behind the facade so the filling material was a brick in the workshop they put uh, holes they perforated the bricks and we had steel bars as a support so all the things that workers should do to lay the bricks in the supporting bars uh, and uh, all the supporting bars had codes and that is the instruction we prepared in the office there was a code for each row row number one to row number n and then steel bars they had also codes so in this instruction uh, for example it was written the row number one steel bar number one there is a projected brick row number one steel bar number two it's hollow you know there was no need for the workers to understand the whole concept of the project and uh, they were surprised when when the project was finished uh, and they were surprised how they they were able to do such complicated uh, facades so easily the reason Aga Khan was interested in uh, in this project I I believe it was not uh, at all about statics and uh, you know because uh, there are many projects uh, statically more beautiful than our project sent to Aga Khan and they were interested in the instruction the new method which was uh, only produced only for this project and it happened again in approximation house because in approximation house all the details and all the fit fittings metal fittings uh, and all the bars every every detail uh, is designed uh, only for this project you cannot find all these fittings and uh, fixtures in the market before uh, construction we usually make mock-ups uh, of the facade. Uh, we did this for uh, approximation house and we did this facade of um, Mellat Bank if you if yeah. you've seen the facade yeah. it's a copper facade and uh, we, we, we made different uh, mock-ups of the detail because the detail is uh, for the first time but sometimes it in Iran uh, for the clients is they, they say you don't know what you're doing <laughs> and they, they are scared yeah. but uh, this is the way, it's, it's very common in other countries, yes. uh, making mock-ups. For, for a creative work, there are always a, a penalty and a reward. Um, algorithmic design is a progress of geometry that we had in the past in our history in Iranian architecture we see very complicated geometries but talking about uh, design tools like computer or asking me to talk about computer like asking me to talk about uh, a pencil because it's a it's a tool it's a design tool but sometimes I need to use this but other times I prefer to start from a, f a piece of foam to make a model it depends, but I have a problem with uh, algorithmic. When you push a button and then uh, something happens, uh, I like to have uh, control of my design. In algorithmic design, uh, sometimes I I, I think that uh, the computer has the control on me, and that's the part I don't like. Uh, there is a quote from uh, Renzo Piano. He agrees 
uh, that uh, we need computer and computer are very smart for for big scale projects we have no way we we should use computer. But computers uh, are like uh, those perfect uh, digital pianos. When you push a button, it plays rumba. When you push a, another button, it plays cha-cha. And uh, you think that you are a great pianist, you are playing very good. That's what happens uh, with some of architecture students when they, they uh, just uh, produce something with computer and they think that that's, that's the way of making architecture, but it's not. What is interesting about architecture is that uh, you are all the time in an unknown, unknown world. Uh, and uh, it has always uh, surprises for you to find out. My, my advice is uh, for them to go f after your curiosity and uh, to go after what you really have passion for. If you really have passion for architecture, okay, go on. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Guys, thank you so much for watching this interview. I hope you get the most out of it. Please stay tuned with us with more upcoming interviews like this. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the button down below, and don't forget to follow our page on Instagram. Thank you.